You're listening to the Poco a Poco podcast, sponsored by Spirit Juice Studios. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Hi, everybody. I'm Father Innocent. Father Angelis. And uh, this is the Poco a Poco podcast. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome back, Father Angelis. Thanks. I like being back. It's good to... It was... Do you want... You can share a little bit because we had... A day of recording, you weren't able to make it to. You got stuck in Florida. Stuck in Florida. There was no pity from the brothers on getting stuck <laughs> in Florida. But it was an interesting, providential, kind of nightmarish. <laughs> being stuck, like being how, stuck, how late were you at the airport? Being stuck in an airport till oh. about 1 a.m. And being stuck amidst the New Yorkers and the people from Boston who also were stuck. Super interesting. The, the Northeast. <laughs> the Northeast corridor was struggling in Florida <laughs> yeah. to get back home. Yeah. But it was great. And, you know, we're, this is what we do. We're kind of mendicants relying on God's providence. And so it was like, oh man. And traveling, we are at the mercy of weather and unions and people who are tired. And so anyway, it was a, it was long drawn out, but God is good. I got to stay with some people that were very good to me and um, got to yes yeah, see some friends and, and back a couple of days late. So here and we are. what time was your flight actually canceled? Um, the flight was actually canceled at about 1230 AM yeah. and it was, it was delayed till 130 AM and it was originally like at six ish or so. And so the, the classic, like keep, they won't cancel it, but they just keep delaying it until they realize that, you know, so anyway, I'm just like, here we go. And then somebody picked you up. Somebody picked me up in the late and me and an, uh, another guy who was stuck in the airport, a friend of mine too. So we were there for a wedding, which was wonderful, but Part of me, and you guys could have imagined me like any sort of like this was not according to plan. And for me, it's just like, oh my gosh, I don't want extra days in Florida. I don't want to rest. I don't want to have downtime. I got things to do. Mm -hmm, and right? one of those things was was recording a podcast <laughs> exactly. with us. Exactly. But the Lord used it, and here we are. Yeah. And uh, you guys had some beautiful episodes with other yeah. people. We had some so guests. I'm grateful yeah. for that. But we kind of wanted to make sure people knew that like we weren't like interviewing for your spot yeah you, you weren't trying to fill my seat <laughs> no not at all not at all i um i do think one thing that's beautiful and that's why i ask kind of the time thing is that part of the mendicant privilege is like you had somebody come and pick you up at like midnight a little yeah. bit after that yeah. just the way in which people care for us is like a really beautiful gift yeah. that we get to receive and it's received because we are poor and can't just go get our own hotel room or whatever. Yeah. And it's beautiful. We'll, we'll probably talk about it in this episode, but, but you had, I had a, a nice, I stayed with a beautiful family and this, this particularly the mom like had my flight number had, had was like monitoring my situation through the evening. She probably knew before me what, what my flights were doing. So it's not like I had someone come and pick me up. I had someone like ready at any moment mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. pick me up and yeah. was like, no problem. no, no, it wasn't uh, anything to her to come in the middle of the night and yeah. get me. So it was just beautiful to be invited into families and have someone care for you. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. I, it was good for me to let go. So, <laughs> yeah. That was mainly what was happening is the Lord just trying to teach me to let go of control. And a couple extra days in Florida. I mean, it, was sunny. It, it wasn't like you rescheduled like the next day. You were mm -hmm. rescheduled like three days later. The airline wanted to uh, uh, reschedule me for a week later. So thank God our, our the lady who helped us with the flights was able to get me on an early flight. But anyway, I might still be there. If, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's good to be back. And it did give us, a, give us a chance to have a couple of guests and try that out. Yeah. And I think it went really, and well. It went really and well. It was really fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Father Tim Monahan, Father Gabriel yeah. Monahan. Yeah. Everybody was themselves. Brother Colby. Everybody was just themselves. Brother Colby rocking the story, the passion, the tears. Of course. Can I just say this too, that um, I think this is the gift of what the podcast is. Is it not, it's not just about us three and Father PT, but there's a, there's a charism that other, that our community really lives and experiences in getting together and talking about what it means to live the gospel. So that just made me really happy. Uh, of course I love being here and I want to continue to be here, but it's not about us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I had a, it's just, sorry to interrupt you, Father Mark too. I had a sister, a Franciscan sister who told me recently, she lives in the, in the Midwest. She, someone asked her, um, how do I learn more about the Franciscan life? She said, listen to this podcast. If you want to know about the Franciscan life, this podcast is what the Franciscan life is. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, that's so, that's it. And she's a Franciscan. Yeah, right? she's a Franciscan she's, herself. Yeah. And I think- the idea of charisms in the church are a bit mysterious. Sometimes you're like, what does it really mean to be a Dominican? What does it mean really mean to be a Franciscan? What does it mean to be a you know, Benedictine or whatever? So the fact that she said, no, these guys are, are living and kind of breathing and spreading the Franciscan movement. And I was like, oh, okay, I like that. Cool. It's beautiful. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. 
Um, I think we have a couple of business items before we get in. Always business. Items. Can I can I do it? Is this well, is this, this is really funny. <laughs> this is so talking about like everyone being themselves, which is a concept we're gonna explore with Father PT um, next time he's on. He couldn't be here today. He had a couple of masses this morning. Um, but uh, the idea of everybody was themselves, like you, like. <laughs> Father Gabriel Mano doesn't do anything that's like businessy or corporate. He like is into that. So like when we started talking about the book, which is at the like we think that there's gr- there's a potential for grace in receiving the book, right? He started like, just reading it, you know. And, and there's some practical around. things about donating to the podcast. He's like, is this a commercial right now? <laughs> <laughs> it was like passing. It was just like you know he's an external processor. I'm like, well, kind of. <laughs> yeah, bro, get the book. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're still working through habits for holiness. <clears throat> This is where I hold this up. There's only one on the table at the moment. We used to have all three or four. And I was prompted. This this is my thing today. Habits for Holiness. If you would like to get it, it's at sentionpress.org backslash holiness. Beautiful. It's also in the description. <laughs> I was told, is that a, actually a backslash or is that a forward slash? I was thinking that exact same thing. I think everybody knows. It's not my world. What I it think is, everybody but I knows, know. but I got, I called it a backslash and I kind of got called out for you it. You got corrected. Is backslash the other way? I think it's just so. slash. It's not backslash. Slash or forward slash, slash would be more holiness. actually accurate. That's hey, pretty, can I admit something? Yeah. I have no clue what quote in the description means. You don't know what that I means. I have no clue what that means. We're I gonna, imagine people listening know what that means and then they know where to find it. Is that is that what we're... I'm going to invite you to stay in the mystery. <laughs> You're not going to tell me. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out somewhere. But I mean, as, as long as the people listening know it's okay, what buddy. quote it's yeah. okay. in the description means. Can you fix whatever's going on right here? <laughs> You're, you're a little uh, father innocent for the <laughs> pardon us, everybody. I'm a, I'm a mess. I'm an absolute mess. Is that all right? Was that distracting to you? <laughs> well, here's the thing because we do have the video component. If you want to watch the video, you can go to Spirit Juices. Hi, everybody. YouTube this channel. is when we look at the cameras. I just want to say Lou loves the video. Lou's my mom, our mom. <laughs> uh, Vicky from Spirit Juice, um, the, the, the video was late, and the only comment was our mom saying, Where's the video? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she felt bad. She's like, <laughs> Vicky's like, Sorry, Luann. Yeah. That's funny. She waits for it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like in the monitor, but I, I could just, no, I, I could see, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, it. you're taking care of me. We're close enough. If you got like, you got food on your face, I'll tell you. Uh, how's your face, Ange? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> hey, great. can I just throw something out there? Yeah. I want to, you're going to, I know you have to do some business things, Yeah. but just want to encourage, uh, visit a lot of college campuses in the last six months. Um, and every, every college bookstore I go into, I look for this. Hasn't been in there yet. So just a, a gentle, subtle encouragement to, especially Catholic college bookstores. So wouldn't this be great? Have it, have it up for, have it, have for, it people, for the people, for the students who, you know, have to come and buy So books. you're saying if they have like, if they're at a Catholic campus, something like that, exactly. encourage, hey, oh, that'd be great. Don't ask, don't ask Google. Ask your bookstore lady. Book hey, get, get this. Have have and then have her follow Mark Mary to campus and there'll be a little book signing and there'll be all sorts of fun. A little stuff. talk. Totally. It'll be awesome. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Maybe Ange, you could go to and I'll get, go to. Absolutely. Do some vocation work. Absolutely. I'll Beautiful. stand. No, no. Anyway, I'll, I'll stand home. Happy right. habits for holiness. Um, the second thing is uh, for those who would like to support the podcast, we'd be very grateful for ongoing, for donations at spiritjuice.org slash poco a poco. Spiritjuice.org slash poco a poco. Rate like if you could like a small monthly donation would just like be super duper and it'd be one of those ways in which we can receive an unmerited gift of your generosity to us as an expression of the Father's love and to bless those who help us and and, ble- and walk with us in this yeah. in this um, journey. It's good to yeah yeah and we're grateful resources. right. We can't do this by ourselves. We are professional beggars and we realize that the God cares for us in these yeah. ways. And so we are super grateful if you have given. Um, we are super grateful to mm-hmm. Spirit, Spirit Juice family over there, Rob and, and the crew. Um, but I think we, yeah, just know yeah. that we're grateful. It's and and the hope is to get a little bit of a margin in that can take some of, particularly some of the production side, things off of my plate, kind of grow the team and just allow us to do this better and incorporate it better with our other responsibilities. Uh, yeah, totally. So if you want to help. We, we, need, we need it. If you want to help me <laughs> survive. Please consider donating. Um, and then it's this. We got another comment about this. It's spirit, like um, spirit, like S P I R I T, like Holy Spirit juice, as in orange juice, as in something you drink, as in two words, not spirit juice. There's another. There's oh, pretty, there's, there's pretty, thing. Cons- pretty consistently, someone reaches out and's like, "By the way, I've been listening for eight months, and I just realized it's spirit juice and not spirit juice." So I, 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 spirit 
juice. I apologize for my uh, problematic pronunciation, but that's that's on me. Uh, I I got a, I got a, a shout out to a OSU and to a family, but we'll we'll if you want to hear that and not listen to the rest of the episode, and that's that intrigues you, you can just go to the end of the episode and then come back. But we'll save it for the end because I think we want to get into it. Let's we do. Let's, 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 let's go. go for it. Sweet, sweet. Um. So, so this is, we're still working through right habits for holiness and that's the idea. And we're kind of, we, we are taking a bit of a, a slow uh, jaunter through this. We're going Father Gabriel Emmanuel pace through this, right? Kind of <laughs> no, let's casual. En- let's enjoy this, huh? Was that just a... <laughs> well, that's, that's not like a surprise to him, <laughs> no, right? No, no. It's like, um, he, he's, he's, he's walking in a garden. <laughs> this morning, he just interrupted Father. We, they were talking. Father Anderson was eating breakfast standing yeah. up, which he usually does. And he's like, hold on. Are you really eating breakfast standing up right now? I thought we talked about this. We're sitting down. And they, it's like, that's his thing. That's his But yeah. chill. But I feel careful. Care for yeah. We're going to sit down and talk through this. We're not going to rush around, <laughs> right? But, but it came up recently, right? Because you went and celebrated Mass. You walked to Columbia University to celebrate Mass. And it took, and Father Gabriel said, oh, it'll probably take whatever, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Yeah. And it took you like 19. Yeah, 19. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We live at two different paces. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, so anyway, we're taking a, a slow walk through for Habits for Holiness. And this is, we're at chapter two, but we're not at step two. We're only at chapter two? Well, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry we spent a little extra time on prayer. I was gone for four episodes. I thought we'd be a little further along. <laughs> Those were all prayer. Those were all okay. prayer. <laughs> worth it. Totally worth it. But I think that's, so, so this is kind of the communal life aspect, the shared discipleship, discipleship, <clears throat> a team sport, um, the the. Family will save the world. And that's what we're going to talk about. And I think mm-hmm. the first thing that we do want to uh, make clear is just that it's not like, okay, it's all, not all of the chapters, if you will, are of equal value. It's not like, okay, pray a little bit, do a little bit with communion. Okay, spend a little time poor. celebrating, spend a little time with the poor. But, but it's like, but um, mm-hmm. these, are, these are foundational and essential ongoing components of our, of our discipleship and our journey of prayer and of of shared discipleship, of family, of communion. Mm. Um, do you guys just do you guys have anything to emphasize in that area? I mean, I just I just think it's just good to recognize that like prayer, it, it's not like this. Um, like I mean, you you've said it, but but we just want to make sure we get the first things first, right? And th- that it's obviously intimacy with God, but that doesn't stand alone. Like that has consequences in our life, mm-hmm. right? And so we talk. We've been talking about prayer and and really living in this relationship with the Lord and this this radical, beautiful intimacy. And when we talk about family, when we talk about the communion we have with one another, it's, it's in this rightful place of, of, of life with God, right? And so we just don't kind of set our, side, our prayer aside. And then, then we, we kind of, it just, when we look about, at the ingredients, we just want to make sure we keep in perspective these, these essential things that we have to have and that, are, that, are, that kind of flow from God. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, that's why I'm excited to talk about it because I think it just, there's a lot of momentum. And just to jump on that, to add through that exactly, and maybe in a more specific way, uh, obviously just being down um, in Florida for a wedding, it, when I was preparing for the homily, it really hit me that this sacrament, this relationship that obviously grows into a family, is the privileged space of grace for this couple. Um, and so they do have their personal prayer lives and they do uh, go to the Lord in their own intimate space with him. But... This, this grace and this privileged space of, of sacrament is not an accessory to their life. Now that when I, when I profess these vows to one another, this becomes, a, a, I don't, I mean, I, I don't want to be too real, bold, but a, like a real concrete space that the Lord then uses to transform and to heal and to forgive and, and do all the interior work he wants to do to set someone free to flourish, right? Yeah. So it's not like, I wonder what I'll do today to be able to be holy, to be able to give my life away. No, bro, you are married and that means something. Yep. And, the, and your kids or your wife and your kids are your mission, mm-hmm. are, the, are the place where you become holy. And it's beautiful to see this couple start to recognize that. Like, whoa, okay, this is, this is, this is how this works. So it's not just, I get, a, I get to have a holy hour and everything's worked out. No, like, bro, there's fruitfulness that, that will change you in, in married life. And that's what sacri- like, it just it struck me, like that's what sacraments are is a manifestation of God's life, right? So when we talk about the sacrament of marriage, like it's a manifestation of God's life. Like this is real, like this is essential. This is how God chooses to, to communicate and to, to, to reveal himself, right? So I think there's just something really beautiful about that, that communion is sacramental, family sacramental in a sense, mm-hmm. where this is the way that God, this is a fundamental way that God chooses 
to, to, to bring life to the world through relationships with one another. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I think some of, some of this specifically, we're going to really kind of do a, a deep dive and unpack in our next episode. So teaser, if you want to mm. learn more about why this is real, why this is important, <laughs> come on back. But I think I, you got a little fired up there when you're talking about it, Father Angelus. You want, you got. It's you, great to, to be a part of like helping people find out where God wants to mm, allow them to be whole. Yeah. And grow in, not, yeah. that's horrible to quote your book there, Habit. I mean, how do we make growing in holiness a thing? Yeah. And why was quoting my book horrible? <laughs> I mean, just no, no, cheesy, you were just no, but I just don't want, I didn't want to be, I didn't <laughs> want to like be cheesy and like using, yeah. like I'm growing in habits for holiness, everyone. Look at this. It's like a kid's book, you know? But the, the reality is that that's their place. Our our life together is our place. Yeah. And again, we're going to talk about this. I didn't mean to get ahead of you, by the was, way. I, no, I, was, I didn't think that was me getting ahead of you. Yeah, I didn't this. see it getting ahead of it either. I'm like, oh, I thought we were on track, Father Mark Mary. I thought this was family. What did, what, that wasn't meant to be like a um, a rebuke or a, a, a <laughs> recorrection. I was like, well, I was feeling, I'm feeling the momentum. But I you, thought, I thought we were locked in, and <laughs> yeah. he just rerouted us. No, well, the you know, the conversation about not every necessary grace is just in the chapel. Yeah, oh, was that the next episode? Not episode? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you anyway, were pretty, like, pretty, you were pretty close to that I'm right there. Pretty excited about the fact that. <laughs> Married life is a beautiful experience of yeah, grace yeah. that I get that I don't actually get to meet at all in married life, but <laughs> our, we, we are, a part you get of, to help people discover that though. Yeah. And realize that that's their primary place to experience God. Amen. Amen. Um, so what we are going to talk about, <laughs> whoa, don't make it sound like that. We're on bro. We're, we're in it. I'm locked in after four <laughs> episodes away. I am locked in <laughs> the, um, I think I want to define something a term and, and we're, we're going to explore what family means or how we're going to be using family. Beautiful. Um, and then we'll kind of, we'll kind of keep going deeper with that. So we're going to talk about the family. We're going to talk about the relationship between the family of, 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 of water, of blood, of grace, and then um, kind of take a sweet look at the shelter. And um, I don't know. And then we'll do something else from there. This is where you're, you're ready to remind us what we said we were going to talk about. Well, yeah, no, that wasn't, that was part of it. And part of it was me attempting to read my writing. I have some <laughs> writing here. You're thinking, no, your thinking. interior voice is saying, okay, these guys clearly forgot about what this no, episode is about. I don't, so I'm just going to go through it. So he's being like, a good leader. He's like this leader. word right here, I have no idea what I yeah. wrote. <laughs> and that's a pretty common theme in my life. Um, Mercy. But, okay. And we've talked about this idea before. Uh, but I'll just explain it in case like there's probably like one or two people who haven't listened to every episode and studied them deeply. So just for you, for that one person. Um, <laughs> so, so the, I love this idea and it's, it's a bit of a response to the Dostoevsky beauty will save the world. Right. There's something about it, which is like, just kind of cute and which I want, like we want to be true, but I just think it's a little, if you're not understanding beauty correctly, it's a little bit reductive of, of, how serious mm. the problem is and what we're really made for, because I just don't think that there's a there, beauty and particularly the beauty of arts certainly has an essential place to, to play. And our Holy fathers have been saying that for the last few years. And I'm not going to, I'm not yeah. even trying to come close to, to speaking against that just, but, but even more fundamental than the beauty of stuff is the, is the beauty of relationship. It, particularly, I think the beauty of family. And that's, that is one of the gifts of Christianity is that we have a father who loves us, who invites us to, to enter into this relationship with family, not just with our immediate family, but with kind of the wider, the wider uh, family that is humanity, that particularly those who we share this humanity or this family with via baptism, right? And so the, the idea is this, is that family, um, family will save the world. Family mm -hmm. will save the world. And, um, you know, I think we're going to, I think we're going to jump ahead actually. And okay. I'm going to define the term family because very quickly um, it's hard for us to not think of nuclear family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. But I want, mm -hmm. I want to spread the definition. And this is where like Jesus, where, where they, they come to Jesus and they're like, Hey, your, your mother and your mother's outside or whoever, like your brother's outside and they want to talk to you. And he's like, well, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? Right. That, that Jesus in the gospels in, in this gospel, we tend to focus in on it as, um, in like an apologetic sense, like, okay, well, what does this mean about Mary? But if we kind of, and that's, there, there's a conversation there, but if we just kind of look at it, it's a good reminder that Jesus is elevating definition of family and he's calling us to, a, to an, another, another view of family. And so that's what we are going to talk about. We're not just in this episode, family will save the world. We're not just talking about nuclear family. We're not just talking about your mom and dad by, by birth. 
in particular, I think it's important because a lot for a lot of people, that's a place of real struggle and wound. And, um, and as I've talked with other people about it, I was kind of surprised by some of the responses. It can make people very, very uncomfortable. Mm. And so I do just want to begin like, okay, we are talking about family in a different sense, particularly the capacity of the church and the desire of the church to redeem family, especially areas where, where family is, is a broken experience. Yeah, I, the thing I I want to I want to um, talk about is just that how we're like we're made we're made for a communion right and like we're made in the the image and likeness of God so we are made in communion for communion so we are made to live in a relationship so I have this thing when I teach about communion that like we're made in communion for communion right and so like it's it's not just the fact that like oh like I'm I'm kind of the nuclear family like I'm I, I'm in a, in a particular time in history, in a particular place in the world, I have these people that I, like I live with, or I call my mom, my dad, my aunt, my uncle. Like, like before all that though is is the is God's vision for for a relationship. Before all that is God's vision for solidarity. Pope John Paul talked. John Paul II talked about a lot. Like, it's it, there's there's a union and or let me say this a communion that we all share that's way deeper. And I think this is what Jesus. Jesus came in his own person to, to like there, like, I want you to see differently. I want you to relate to everyone differently. My mother and my brother and my sisters is the one who, who does the will of my father, right? Who, who, who has one father in heaven and we're all living in this relationship. And this binds us, this, this, this helps us live in communion of intimacy, right? Mm. And this is, this is all because, right, we're, we're made in the image and likeness of God. When we're created, when we are knitted together, you know, we're, this is a part of our spiritual DNA that we're called to live as family together, right? So I love how you kind of break open the, you kind of break the boundaries of this and, and we have to start seeing and relating differently because this is at kind of the, the deepest parts of who we are to, to live in communion. I don't have anything to add. I think it's, it's important that I think we console people and encourage people to say, whatever I've had an experience of my family. Um, particularly in my nuclear family, that God can redeem that and God can break into that, especially through the power of grace mm-hmm. and, and encouragement to, to experience a new healing and a new way to be connected and a new way to experience, um, yeah, something different. Mm-hmm. Great. And, and we'll, we'll go into it, particularly the, how we experience or see it, is the it, homeless shelter. Is that the next episode? Or? No, this, you know, what's <laughs> funny, by the way, is I'm looking at my notes and the whole thing about not every grace you need is received in the chapel. Who's is in this it, <laughs> I have it right here under episode one. <laughs> and you didn't even correct me. Bro, I am I am following your lead, bro. I'm happy to be as a follower. As, as Father Innocent was speaking so eloquently, I was also trying to, to um, what's that called when you try and figure out what something says in a different language? Or like a, I was trying to, dis- to <laughs> decipher? translate, decipher my writing here. And I did so. And it all started to make sense again. All right. So we're t- so the family. So the this is a, a, a saying from Father Glenn. And then we'll look at what this looks like. Um, because this saying that family will save the world, actually it's the fruit of experience and reality. And then the language came afterwards. And Father Glenn has this beautiful line that it's uh, blood is thicker than water, but grace is thicker than blood. Mm. And I think, I think what it's saying is like blood is thicker than water. Like basically like family, there's a particular bond to family, which is real and deep. And even though like, yeah, relationship to, to friends are something, there is a unique bond that you have to your family. And I experienced this with, with my own family, even with like cousins, because we have cousins who have who've kind of grown up apart from, from me. I don't see them all the time, but there is like, this is family. And there is, a, a, there is some part of unity and, and duty and loyalty to them, which is just not because of anything that's happened, but because of who we are in relationship. You guys, that makes yeah, sense, right? Totally. Can I tell a story? Yeah. I just told this at breakfast and I'm surprised we haven't told this story in a long time, but the brothers were loving it just the unique bond of family. We're obviously triplets. I was telling them the, the story of um, being, obviously being born and going home and not having enough cribs for everybody. And so we just stayed in one crib and we kind of slept head to head in a way. And then growing up, the uh, as we grew in those years, every time they tried to separate us, we would cry and not go to sleep. And then all they, they would do is put us back in the same crib and then we would go to sleep. And so they, there was this this reality and there's like a, a battle over the course of like two or three years. And we jumped they our, tried to separate. I think we jumped the cribs together. Yeah, Father <clears throat> Ennis and I like had this plan of like scooting the cribs back together if they tried to separate us. But it's, and the brother's like, oh my gosh, it's really beautiful. But there's just the reality of like the intimacy of, of being, you know, brothers and sisters. And 
we would not have it to be separated. Mm -hmm. And, and as much, and that my parents, they eventually as a joke would try to separate us just to see what happens. And then they would hear us jumping into my sister's crib and they'd find us in the morning with our heads together. You know, Mm -hmm. it's funny just this morning I was talking about that, but this, this, the reality, like we, to, to experience this communion and to fight for it and to like at any cost be like, you know, we don't want to be separated. Mm -hmm. We're going to be together. And we're going to, we're going to, you know, so it's beautiful. And a funny story to another behind the scenes story is this is something that happened. It's just how you guys got assigned to the same house, right? You guys got sent to different houses and then you just cried and you wouldn't sleep (laughs) at night. Weird. (laughs) It was weird. We like, I was like, okay, go, just go to the same house. We we have one cell. We just have bunk beds. (laughs) Yeah. It's weird. That's not true. Actually. We cry and we just get what you want. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so natural family. We were right there. So anyway, so, so blood is thicker than the water. And I think, I think uh, our audience, that's, that's something that they experience very deeply. And what Father Glenn is adding to it, and I think what the gospel adds to it, and I think what Christianity adds to it is that, well, grace is thicker than blood. That even, there's an even deeper bond and union and communion um, that happens through baptism. Did I say, did I misspeak? No. Blood is thicker than water. Grace is thicker than blood. I, okay. No, you I think that's it. just hard to, hard to grasp. Not, not like, cause you explained it, but it's just like, that's a serious mental and emotional jump mm-hmm. um, to, to like, let go of our preconceived experience yeah. of what that means and, yeah. and to be able to enter into that truth. I think we all have to kind of be it, uncomfortable with, with yeah. that and what that means. And I think there's a, a way to go into it um, gently. Part of, I think a, a starting point is just like, you know, no matter how much our biological, our natural fathers loved us, like our heavenly father, loves us even more. And, and that, you know, and that can be hard. That can be hard for a parent in particular, I think to, to resonate with, like if, you know, if their child feels called to religious life, for example, and that's a real struggle. And there's this idea that like somehow the way the, the God, the father who calls them and invites them to this life cares, like invites them from an even deeper place of love than, than a parent's own place of love. Like that can be, that's a hard thing to, to wrap one's head around. Totally. And to, to all the Pashlan moms who I know are listening, yeah. um, we have this, we have this meeting and we, we talk about Pashlan we talk about novitiate and moms start to struggle a bit when you talk about their sons receiving a new name. Right. Right. So the reality of like something their, their parents who are beautiful are sitting right in front of them. They've given them this baptismal name, the name they're baptized in. But now when you like insert the gift of religious life, you're talking about a deeper reality that the fatherhood of God is deeper and calling them to live in a, in a new uh, way and a new yeah. consecration. And so they get another, they get a name from, from God, right? So it's, it's very beautiful, but it's moms, moms and dads often struggle because one of the moms in my experience of being passion director was like, well, I like the name I gave my son. And right, I'm like, exactly. And I'm like, I do too. Yeah. But you know, but this reality is that there's, there's a fatherhood of God that's deeper and that has called your son. And so this new, re- new way of relating is, is essential. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's essential. It's kind of at the heart of it. Kind of random, but Mary and Joseph are, can be a good, you know, right. moment in, in the, in the presentation where, or no, sorry, the finding of Jesus in the temple where they have this moment where they have to recognize and it's, it's the grace was active in them as well, right? This, this reality where they had to kind of understand how, how this, yeah. this, this fits together, right? Yeah. And so they kind of understood what it's like to suffer as parents to be like, whoa, my son has, a, there's something more. There's something, yeah. there's something deeper yeah. there. But it doesn't mean that that, that that goes away. Right. It just means that they mysteriously kind of are a part of who we yeah. are as, as God's people. And, and I think there's something as we're processing it out loud, and this is the most time I've really spent like analyzing the statement. There's probably something about it, which is um, poetic and kind of cute and provocative, but can like, I don't think we want to compete the relationship between grace and the relationship between blood. The grace elevates the relationship of oh, yeah. blood. For and sure. it expands it. It, it, it expands it. It's, yeah. it's, it's expansion of our understanding yeah. rather yeah. than a one kind of consuming the other. Ooh, that's very Trinitarian. But I do mm-hmm. think though, we have to note that there's a real relationship, Yeah. right? When grace happens, something does happen where we don't just leave our, our natural right. blood relationships yeah. and just like, you set those off to the side, but grace transforms them. Right. And what's that mean? I think that's what we're, we're, yeah. we're broadening or breaking yeah. up in the communion. Yeah. And I think that's probably the principle. That's the, the thing that we want to just kind of bring home. It's just that, some there is a real relationship as the by the fruit of baptism, um, that's like that's profound and that's real, and that we don't you don't want to just sort of dismiss that. But by our 
nature gave us a biological family. Grace has given us uh, a supernatural family, but it's a real family. Yeah. But it's a real yeah, family. It's and, it's, and it's a family which, uh, which the Lord desires us to be committed to, to love, and which can also um, redeem any sort of area. Yeah, I think can be at the service of redeeming some of the areas of what natural family left lacking, even if it's just sort of through, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't have, I don't have natural brothers, right? Nature didn't give me natural brothers. And look at us. Yeah, now <laughs> you, know? you have brothers right. though. Right. And this is part of the thing. This is part of my experience of, of the fullness of family is through brothers here. Yeah. And I, I, I teach the postulants that as we look at our history and we look at our own families, right? The gift of our families, but also sometimes there is brokenness. Mm -hmm. And I think for our listeners, it's just good to recognize that we are realists, that we understand that sometimes family is really hard. But I think the grace of it all is that the fatherhood of God just, just breaks in. And so if you don't have like this experience of a nuclear family that you desire, like that's when I think God wants to break in with this supernatural family and the fatherhood and the motherhood, like the spiritual mothers we have in our lives are like, man, they're gifts from God. Yeah. Like the, the fathers, the brothers, the sisters, like we, we experience that a lot in our life, but God has to do that. That's the fatherhood of God breaking through and the supernatural, the supernatural family becomes not just like, oh, I wish I had, I wish I had that experience, but like, no, this is God loving me. Mm -hmm. And we have tons of examples of that, but this is for everyone. Yeah. It's not just a consolation prize. Can I say that? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I just, but, I, but, but, I feel, I feel like, yeah, I feel like the, this gift of, of when life of baptism, life of grace is, totally. and the connection we experience of life in the church, the body of Christ, um, again, fulfills our experience of our nuclear family, takes it further, it expands it, but it's not just some, for some people, it's not just for like, oh, those who are involved in the parish. It's not just like, well, I guess I'll settle for this, but it's a real, um, yeah, I, I love the word to use. It's a real invitation to an elevated experience of life with God. And, and it's not um, that, yeah, it's not accessory. It's not on the outside. It's not um, something that, that could just happen for some people. Mm -hmm. I think, I, but I think it's a, a real gift that all of us will need and uh, ultimately desire to receive from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's great. It's not second best. The family, family by grace, family by baptism isn't second best. I think that's great. Uh, and probably I do want one of the one of the families who I I think I named them, but the experience of family was was with the Benzingers. Uh, so that's Michelle and Chris. Michelle so from good. that podcast. Um, no, <laughs> the other we love yeah. Michelle. Abiding together, lovely. Mr. Miriam. We haven't Mr. talked Miriam. about them in a while. No, I kind of like. I think we've kind of moved on. I'm yeah. <laughs> Well, people haven't moved on because people say, yeah, I listen to you guys, but still I listen to Biden. Get totally. Free. We still get Which is fine. First. Which is fine. Do you know what a diss track is? No. So there's this, there's like, there's a way to like hack the YouTube algorithm. So like, if you're like a, you know, a C level rapper or something like that, you drop a diss track on like a mainstream rapper and it gets a lot of attention. It's controversial. And it's a way for you to like leverage, you leverage their fame by, and you attack them as a way to raise, <laughs> elevate exactly your own thing. Doing. And that was, I feel like, I feel like for like 15 episodes, there was like, like there, this were like, this were a diss track version of a podcast. <laughs> I think it worked. We <laughs> love them though. That's the so you know I mean? But now we're done with the diss track. I, I met Sister Miriam, by the way, had a great time. She'll be up with uh, our with our guys, yeah. soon. Super excited about that sister. And we're, we're excited yeah, and I look forward to seeing what God does because I hope that we can, I think there's actually going to be some sort of shared mission together, yeah. or shared That's call. Because awesome. um, we are very different, but we're kind of heading the same direction, same page. Um, so I look forward to seeing whatever develops of that. But um, I was down, it's happened to me a couple of times with the Benzingers and there's a lot of things to say with it. So it's a great family down in, in Pensacola. You haven't been there yet. You will be Father Angelus. Unbelievable. But first of all, there's an experience. They have a, a kind of a wider young adult community who does stuff with them. And one of the experiences of the young adults who come into this house is, is really, it is, it's a redeeming experience of family mm -hmm. because so many of us don't experience family lived well. And there's like a doubt that this can, can actually be, be possible, be possible. And it's like, Oh, it's just so healing and so hope giving and so redeeming of the family experience when you're with this, a family who's doing it well. And again, that's part of what the church desires to offer. That's part of what, but we who create, you know, families like can offer to the world is just, by giving place people a home, by giving places a safe place, by giving people an invitation to share in your own experience of family as an opportunity to, to redeem 
some some more broken experiences of families and all families are still on the journey. Yeah, and I, to, to reiterate for Father Mark, it's not healing because it's perfect, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the friary here is is healing for a lot of people, but it's not because we're perfect and it's not because our life here is perfect. But there's a there's a activity and a movement of grace in the Benzinger's life and in our, in, in our siblings' life and in, in the families we experience that somehow allows God to be present that changes people, right? And people make choices to love and sacrifice in the midst of drama and conflict and personality struggles and yeah. things like that, right? And so that's I think that's encouraging to a lot of people is they feel comfortable there because it's messy still. Mm-hmm. But there's there's somehow divine life and love in the mess and accepting one another in the mess and seeing one another in the mess because it's like Father Innocent's a mess and he goes to Ben Singers and he's loved and seen there. I yeah. was like, okay, that's that's what this this family is. Yeah. I'm tired at the end of the day in the friary and guys, guys see me and support me and encourage me. And that's what makes this family healing. Yeah. Right. And so it's beautiful. It's, it's not, they're not perfect. And so like, I have to like, I get to go down there and all of a sudden they're perfect and I'm not, so I don't fit in. Mm-hmm. But I recognize that in my own imperfections that the Lord comes um, yeah. and we have those everywhere, but it's beautiful. It's like, it's this mystery of life and grace and imperfection. Yeah. And that's, I, I, I will, has, I'm not going to share anymore because I'm Come like, on. there's a beautiful story, but I don't, it may not be mine to, sh- it's like, it's an internal experience from the family. It's probably not mine oh, to sure. share. Okay. So, um, but one of the <laughs> close, I got close. It was good, but, um, good prudence there. Thank you. You know, cause it's like, you know, not everything, not every good yeah, thing is my totally. good thing to, totally to share with, uh, our, our august audience. What were we talking about? We're talking about family. Family will save yeah, the world. Yeah, family will save the world. <laughs> oh, Perfection. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. creating think, this holy this space. But this is this is what is possible for parents. This is what is possible for families. <clears throat> this is what is possible for religious communities. Is the the individuals are always the whole the, the human component of it's always going to have a level of brokenness. But that's why like the, the sacrament in which the Holy Spirit is a part of like marriage and is part of family is so important. Is the the, the the whole thing isn't perfect, but the one who keeps together, the one to go to mm. is there still like the, 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 the divine redeemer and healer is in the midst of it. And I do think that is, that's an essential component because no family, no parent is going to raise their kid, their children without having some struggles. But yeah. what's important is not that you just never wound your child, but that they also know the one to journey with for, for their ongoing healing. And I think that's why it's if God's in the mix. Like, that he's going to, he's going to do his thing. Father Anderson, I had this funny experience the other day when I used one of your terms, but then when someone asked me to define it and I was like, Oh, I think it was one of the vocation visitors. I had this like, bro. So this is like, they were asking like, father, how do I know? And what does it mean to experience this in prayer and what the Lord is doing? And I was like, bro, so th- th- there's a mysterious moment where you just kind of, kind of lean in to like the grace. And they were like, okay, father, that sounds nice, but what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> Which is great. And so we struggle with that, but that's father Anderson's line. But I feel like this, this way of living, we have to lean into. So what does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the great, one of the graces of the Easter season for me is like the grace of the awe and wonder of the Acts of the Apostles, right? When they're, the, the risen Lord is just constantly appearing, constantly showing himself, constantly pursuing them. And what, would it, what was it like to have him appear once and then have him appear again? And then what their hearts were doing when they got up the next day, wondering, uh, how or when he was going to appear next. Mm-hmm. It's it's a little bit of this this spirit and this openness and this way of seeing and this way of quote leaning into life, not just in the chapel like we talked about, but in in others and in in the providence of life, the obedience of what I have to do and the work I have to do and the people I see. But leaning into okay, the risen Jesus is coming, and and so I think there's a particular grace that would, like the postulants and the vocation visitors like to lean in to the fact that. God is using this experience of family and people I'm with and people I'm connected to, to reveal himself. How do we, how do we lean into that? And how do we look for that? How do we anticipate that? And how do we beg for that? Mm -hmm. Lord, help me to see today how you're going to reveal yourself in my family Mm -hmm. in with, with those I'm connected to and, and and then share this bond of of pursuit, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, totally. totally. But, uh, all right, so now let's talk, let's talk about the homeless shelter. And this is where this idea, this theme really popped for me. My understanding, so Father Innocent worked there for eight years. Eight years, yeah. Eight years. I worked there sort of as a seminarian, kind of volunteered, and then a year when I was at St. Crispin Friary. I had a summer there. You had a summer there. 
Um, you know where it's located. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> um, but because I think people do ask the question, right? Really like, okay, like how, how does somebody end up in the shelter? Like what is there, is it always one thing or the other thing? And, and I don't think, I don't think it's like just, um, there are some guys where it's a substance thing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's definitely not across the board. And there are things where it's like, they're from another country and they, they just, they're kind of on their own or it's just kind of like a kind of an unforeseen business situation or sometimes some, you know, mental, mental illness. But, but I do think like if what is most common would be some sort of broken family situation, mm-hmm. because that's why like there, because I just think about my own life, if everything fell apart, where I would fall to would be like, would mm-hmm. be family. And the reason that the, the chance of me being on the street, I guess like it, it can be different in an addiction, but probably like I would have, I would have a pretty wide safety net because of my family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that one of the reasons the men end up at, at, at the shelter is, is probably going to be because they didn't have that safety net of family, but that's the idea of like, Oh, and then you know, who's providing that those like the church. And so we're there to provide that safety net. We're there to be family to those who don't have family to catch them. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. This is the church being family. This is the salvific nature mm-hmm. of, of church as family of being there to catch and to receive those who are in need, um, who don't have a, a biological or natural family to, to catch them. Can you speak into that? Yeah, totally. And I, this is, you know, this is close, really close to my heart. Right. Um, I lived, uh, worked there for eight years, lived there three uh, full time for three. Um, and here's, he, here's the thing, like there, there just are, are a lot of orphans out there. Right. And what I mean by that, this experience of life of having no family, having, you know, being isolated from, from a, mo- a mother and father, brother and sisters, like it, it's real. People don't have a safety net. Um, again, for all the reasons you said, but <clears throat> there's this real, there's this real experience for people that come and knock on the door of St. Anthony's where they are orphans. They have nowhere to go. Right. And, and there's a spiritual experience of that where they have never ex- encountered the fatherhood of God and the goodness of God, a father who cares and loves them and sees them. But also there's a, there's a reality that um, they, they, they just, don't have this daily experience of someone else being in their lives to say, listen, I am with you. Like I, I, I see you and I love you and I'm, I'm here to help you. Right. We had a, we had a young man last week come to the door and I'd met him at the bridge and, and um, he had been a heroin. He has been a heroin addict for, for like 10 plus years. And he, we were, I was speaking with him and he's like, he didn't know what to do when I started to care for him and ask questions about his life. And, and what do you, how can I help you? Like, what do you want me to do? And I made a plan for him. He's like, he's like, father, like, and he got emotional. He's like, I just don't know what to do. Cause I've never had anybody who cared. And I was like, and the fatherhood was like just exploding <laughs> out of me. I'm like, but I do, like, mm-hmm. I care about you, you know? And that's a good example to, to start, start talking about St. Anthony's is because we have young men or men of all ages, but there's a sweet spot for young men who struggle with addiction. And there's this experience of life and, and we, that's what we say. Like, I, like, I am with you. Like, I will, I will be a father to you. And, and that's to the smallest details of like, all right, let's, let's set an alarm. Like, do you have an alarm to get up in the morning or, you know, let's like a schedule for the day. Um, you know, so it's, it's a lot of fatherhood stuff like that, that, that people need, but it's also like this spiritual fatherhood of teaching people how to pray, bringing them back to the sacraments. Um, you know, the daily experience of mass and, and the chapel time and, so there's so much going on there, but the, the, the gift of it is that like, come live life with me. Like come in the, the Franciscan way is that we can't like, we can't like be family from afar. Like you got to come and live with us, come and yeah. be with us. Like yeah. come and see that there's a, there's a gospel thing there. Like I want you, we have to be close because you have to experience this because it is the way we see people and spend time with people. It's the family dinners every night. That's like a value, right? Like, so when you sit down with someone and say, hey, like, how was your day? And again, it's just like, oh my gosh, brother, like I've never had anybody ask me how my day was and care about it. Mm-hmm. They come in night to night. You guys remember you, they come in and they, they, there's like a check-in process. And from day to day, you remember about their lives. Like, hey, how was your doctor's appointment? How was, you saw so-and-so like this, and you remember who they are. And they're like overwhelmed that someone knows about them. They're mm-hmm. not, they're not anonymous anymore but they're, they, they're a part of a family who sees and loves and cares and they're known, right? Mm-hmm. 
And so this is the invitation of the church. It's not, it's not because like it's a consolation prayer. It's like, oh, well, I feel sorry for you. But no, this you're made for this. And so as friars, it's just a, such an incredible joy to, to invite people to live with us. And the healing that happens spiritually and humanly when people do this. Um, I remember, you know, a, a young man who, you know, he was, I think he was turning like 36 or th- 35, 36, he was mid thirties. And, and um, we told him we were gonna have a birthday party and things like that. And, you know, so we made him a homemade cake. Um, Brother Nathaniel made him a homemade cake and candles in the bin. The friars from LA came and everybody's out. We're having a barbecue and we sing him happy birthday. And he just starts crying. And, and Father Lewis is like, you know, you know, like, are, are you, you just asked him, I was like, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I just never had a birthday party. before. Like no one's ever seeing me happy birthday. Mm. And he's 36 years old. Mm-hmm. Right? Like family, <laughs> like happy birthday. Like you have people who, who care that you're alive, right? And these are dramatic stories, brothers, but this is the heart, I think, of the gospel in this grace we're talking about, that it's, it, it, it just is so much deeper than our broken relationships or our tough experience of relationships, because this is the, the communion that God desires that we, we belong. I think the hope that's given in St. Anthony's is somehow, I think the men who go there, go in with this experience of, being condemned to death like this. Like I have a life sentence of being isolated and disconnected and sad, right? And somehow these guys at St. Anthony's, it's got like, kind of like, okay, we, we're going to speak into that and bring you back to life and give you your life back, right? And ideally in six months, these guys can be restored and be put back together on all levels. And then they're able then to go back out into life with, with a new connectedness, a new confidence, a new experience of themselves to be able to dive back in, hopefully, right? Mm-hmm. The, and it's the challenges that, that are still present, but it's just like so many people have feel like they're living this condemnation that somehow I'm always gonna be on the outside. And alone. And alone. And somehow I'm always gonna be dis- disconnected. And when I look into families or I look into the friars or I look into parishes that are, that are, that are alive or um, you know, ministries or, or whatever, when I look into that, there's, there's this lie that I can't, I'm not good enough or there's no, I don't have what it takes to be a part of that because I'm too, too broken or too, or too destroyed in, interiorly, right? And it's beautiful. No, it's not true, right? Wherever you've been, whatever's going on. And we tell that that's basically what we do in the confessional is we, we remind people that their sin and their weakness and their brokenness cannot separate them from this truth and from this grace. St. Anthony just has it become this concrete place where people like get their uh, death sentence overturned. And they, they get hope again to live life and to experience the fact that I'm not alone. And that Father Innocent and the brothers, Father Lewis, those guys that break into this condemnation, they give them a new start. <laughs> that, what yeah. happens there is, gonna, is what needs to happen and what, what is the church. Mm-hmm this, this truth being spoken in, in so many different areas, but this, I think this is what we're getting at. There is a necessary grace. There is necessary grace that is to be received in quiet and stillness and contemplation and and spending time with the word of God. But the fullness of grace is not confined to that, that there is grace that the Lord really wants to communicate to us a mediated through family. And this is just a very deep and, and through, through, through other people. And mm-hmm. this is a deeply Catholic worldview. Um, God uses uh, particularly like ministers of, uh, through the sacraments, use priests to, to, to um, mediate to us, to give to us the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, to give to us uh, his mercy. We have our lady, right? The mediatrix of all grace. Like, but we also have family and there is like, if, and, and the real stuff of family, like asking for forgiveness, the real stuff of family, like having a conversation, the real stuff of family, like being seen um, in, in weakness, like this, this real concrete stuff that comes with living community, like there's grace in that and not for, and not to try and always, okay, I, the, I and I don't, and again, I want to be careful with it the response to everything, the answer to anything, like I need to pray more. Sometimes I just need to ask for help from a yeah. person, right? Sometimes it's I incarnational. Need, yeah. It's so Franciscan, it's an yeah. incarnate, like we need people stuff, you know? Yeah. We didn't use this term. Um, or, it, there's a temptation to over spiritualize things, right? And we can, we can over, over, overly be concerned about that. And it's exactly what you just said, but just use that term. Like 
just the reality of like, I, sometimes I need a face to look at me. Sometimes I need a face. Not me, not sometimes. Just, you know, like most it, times, you know, when I, and I and obviously <laughs> the incarnation is the gift of the face of Christ. Right. And mm-hmm. so they, again, in theological reality, it's a part of who I am that, that Jesus comes to me, but he uses you and he, and he, and he uses um, spouses for one another and the kids. And, and well, there's this, this way in which we can be, ex- the, maybe the, the main way we experience right. the gift of being loved is by those in our life. Mm-hmm. And that's what it means to be yeah. the church. Yeah. And so like when, if, if you're a parent or something like that, and your kids are always, always wanting more, always wanting more, always wanting more, there's real grace and real transformation, real formation of like you dying to yourself, of becoming like totally others focused. Like, like God's doing that work through these real circumstances. Right. And if you're like a, whatever, you're a missionary or something like that. And, um, whatever people are doing weird stuff in the chapel and it's driving you nuts and you have to like wrestle with that. Like they're, that's like, that's actually re- very formative, you know? And that's a real thing that you have to work through. And you mean when Father Gabriel <laughs> blows his nose next to me all the time? Yeah, that, that, There's that grace example. in that. There's an invitation to <laughs> it's, grace it's and to transform true. and to it's renewal. True. Yep. Um, and when Father, I actually coughed to, for 10 straight years and so I'm getting through my cough, but that's <laughs> been a, a moment of formation for a lot of guys. But don't waste it. Don't, don't waste, waste the yeah. grace. Like there's so many opportunities where God is breaking through in our lives and the absolute primacy is, is prayer and intimacy with yeah. him. But another privileged place is one another, is yeah. the, the family, yeah. is the gift of relationship that God gives us. I heard one of the postulants say the other day that they were at the door and someone was, um, and I didn't have to like prompt them. They were like, he just talks a lot and he just really likes to talk. And he, and he said, you know, I wonder if the father is like that with us. <laughs> if the father just loves to talk to us. Yeah. I was like, that's formation. That's yeah. like an openness to like, this person loves to talk, but I wonder if that's the way the father loves yeah. us. Just well, like, I thought you were doing the opposite of like the father, like, like I talk a lot and the father has to be like, but I think it was beautiful. It's like I, the father like constantly and consistently yeah. and just loves, to, yeah. loves yeah. to reveal himself. Yeah. I was like, that's, that's beautiful. Cause he saw it. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question. Cause this is a new, this is another new thing that's cooking is, is the problem over spiritualizing or under spiritualizing. And I'm, what I mean like this is, because I think one of the things that's happening a lot is that we are removing the work of God and the spiritual component to some very ordinary things like whatever, the, the brother who fidgets during prayer. Mm. Like who, that, that, who that, writes that, really loud during <laughs> prayer. <laughs> yeah, you. Um, <laughs> But like, so, cause, cause that's, I think that there's something to like, there can be a way of over spiritualizing things too. But also I think that we don't want to, to remove grace in the work of God through things like sitting down and having family dinner together in the, in the context of a marriage, like that there's grace involved with that and that there's real. Mm, there's, I, I love that. So yeah. don't under spiritualize those things. The ordinary, just like, yeah, yeah just, as well. You're keeping it in the ordinary. Like. No, that's yeah. fair. That's because you don't want to over spiritualize it by I only can find God here in the chapel. So Correct. that's over. And, but you don't want to under spiritualize it by yeah. That's I thought that's fair, very fair. I think it's good to wrestle with that. Yeah, and it's good to keep that tension. You know, like or like when seminary they talk about the the altar of the desk. That like through your, like there's a real offering of yourself to the Lord that's made through study, right? And that would be a way of of finding the spiritual and and the ordinary things, right? Yeah, that we probably wasted a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Hey, speak for yourself. I, I was really good. Uh, we could tell stories. So I think the invitation, the invitation is um, probably twofold. Number, uh, n- number one, what would be the first one? I do want to invite people to actively pursue the experience of Christian family, shared discipleship. Um, there's ups and downs to that, right? Like family. Did we talk about family as purgatory? No. Oh man. Can I go into that? This is late in the episode. Most people what is are this probably story? done, but yeah. this is a, this is a, we'll come back next, next episode. We'll talk about that. We're going to start with the experience of family as purgatory as purg as insight into purgatory. Wow. I think it is. I think it is. I think it is. Um, That's a cliffhanger. That's a major. I like yeah, that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah Bring yeah. them back. Um, so to actively pursue family to, and then to, to ask for the, the faith and the grace to see the real ways in which grace is being communicated and made available through through just the people around you. Perfect. Maybe. I like that. Yeah, it sounds good. And, okay, and lastly is family is not like, like shared discipleship communion, communion is not just one of the, it's like not one of the steps, but it's like an essential ongoing component. All right. Who wants to, 
I'll pray. Say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way you love us and care for us. We thank you for the gift of communion. We thank you for the the desire for communion to be seen, to be loved, particularly by you and by one another. We just ask for a deeper grace of this experience in our lives that this would be central, this this longing, this this way of being church that that just overflows in your life and your love that from the chapel would just just explode this grace of of being together and being family we just surrender to you all the obstacles anything that could keep us from living this this communion we just have great gratitude for the ways that you've shown us this in our lives and i bless all you brothers and sisters in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen Amen. All right, here we go. Thank you. T- oh, shout out Oklahoma State University Focus Missionaries. I heard there's some fans there. Clayton and Regan with Baby Joseph. Yeah. Baby Joseph is actually a baby, not the nickname they give to like a really huge guy named Joseph. <laughs> I asked. I thought that would be that would be like a nickname you'd give somebody. Pretty and Baby Joseph, name. and he's like six eight. <laughs> Baby Joseph. Um, huge beard. Baby, like, baby Ange. Baby, baby Joseph is actually a baby. Also, Olivia, Annie, Maggie, Josh. Hope you're still enjoying the podcast. We got to get out there to visit. I'm just saying. Oklahoma State. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Let's go. I heard they have a great priest. I heard they're building a huge church, which is like, that's the, the I, I, what's going on out in Sweet. Oklahoma City. Sweet. Um, yeah. We'll see it. We'll see it. Oklahoma State. I can't actually go probably, but Father Angels. I'm Angelus, not like talking about next week. Father Angels is available. <laughs> um, and then the Scanlon family, James, Melissa, Luke, and Gemma. I think that's everybody. They, uh, they sent a box. They listened to the podcast, heard me cu- talking about how I like simple mugs. And they sent a box of oh, that's it was like eight mug. mugs. Hmm. Six of them arrived. Two of them broke along the journey. Um, but they are in fact very nice mugs. They're great. And no need great to size. send the other two. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they did get sent. They just didn't quite make it. No need to send any more mugs though for everybody <laughs> that's else. Was, that's but the, like, the, yeah. the, the cookies, the, the Char, Char, Cheryl's cookies, remember Father Gabriel? <laughs> Which, oh, we, I'm sure we're getting a commercial it of, co- of cookies. It hasn't come out yet. We don't need any more cookies. We don't. Yeah, I don't need We're anything. pretty solid on mugs. This was a nice one. We don't need to talk to ask thousands of people to send us mugs, <laughs> but this was a very nice gesture. And so thank you, Scanlon family. Like beautiful. This is like, they're just such, like, they sent a picture. It's just, yeah, awesome. I love it. Um, and then Diego, we have a listener down in Mexico who's very funny. He's like, he's probably early twenties. I don't know how old you are, Diego. I'm sorry. But he uh, likes to put things up about the podcast and he, he has uh, referred to himself as being part of team innocent. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Apparently, Father Innocent is his favorite, and we're all part of the ensemble. We're the in- and companions. Everything's oh, Team Innocent. That's embarrassing. We know that's not true. It's, this is Father Mark. I would show. be sad. It is would Father be Mark interesting Mark. to divide up our audience because I bet there's like pockets. When yeah. we were in Nebraska, bro, everybody's like, I like Father, uh, Father Angelus. He's up for the underdog. He likes people who. So are- I feel like I'm the underdog guy. That's kind of like, like the team I stand up for. So Team Angelus, underdog, baby. <laughs> yeah. We're under, underestimated. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I want to say hi to uh, Dr. David Haydick. And his family, he is rocking high school ministry at Del Barton in New Jersey. He's amazing. He also has he also has a podcast with Array of Hope. I think it's called Reasons for Hope. He's just in it. And he's he's an incredible, faithful man. I think a father of eleven, and he's in it for the high, like the high school ministry, Catholic ministry. So he's just a really good guy. So I just want to say thank you, David, for being in it, being so, out there, being faithful. Father Angelus, do you have any yeah, friends? I'm, <laughs> really <laughs> i want to thank all the listeners at ave maria down in down in naples or outside of naples uh visited campus there it was just a beautiful beautiful experience and um prayed with some people and was around some people down there so thanks for listening down there and uh yeah beautiful keep going sweet thanks all right um and if you want to support the podcast help it keep going poco up or no spirit juice not spirit juice spirit juice.org slash poco up poco Thank you. God bless everybody. Bye. Little by week. little. Poco poco. <laughs> Habits for holiness. <laughs> You're a habit for holiness. <laughs> Can we turn off the sound? Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love.